Hello and welcome back to another step-by-step -step video tutorial with Blossom Themes YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to create a business website using Siva Light Free WordPress theme. The steps I have shown you in the video are simple and easy to follow. If you don't have prior knowledge of WordPress or you are just a beginner, this video will help you create your website in no time and you don't require to code or anything as such. This is the demo page of Save a Light Free WordPress theme and we will create an exact site step by step in the video tutorial. Let's get started. We have come to know that 98% of our viewers are not subscribed to our channel yet. So we would be absolutely grateful if you subscribe and press that bell icon for notification update. It will help us to serve you while growing our channel. Let's continue with the video. To access Seva Light Free WordPress theme, you'll have to go to our site blossomthemes.com. Go to Shop, go to Free Themes, then go to Seva Light. This is the sales page of Seva Light Free WordPress theme. If you click on the live demo button, you will be able to see the demo page of Seva Light Free theme. I have already opened the live demo page in this tab. So I will just cross out the tab here and I also have the sales page of the Save a Light free theme over here. Now I will give you a brief tour of the demo page here. Let's start from the header section. Here you can easily add in the site logo if you have already added one. If you don't have a site logo yet, you can also feature your site title and tagline. On the top right, you can easily display your contact details like email address and telephone number. Then on the top left, you can easily display various social media icons. You also get the navigation menu. This theme supports navigation menu in three different areas. The primary, the secondary and the footer area. You also get a back to top button so that your users can easily get back to the top of the page from any section of your site. You also get a header button where you can easily link your contact pages or the page that you want to display on your header section. Then comes the beautiful banner slider. You get two customizable banner options, one with a static image and call to action button. You can also display a video on your banner you can add a catchy line or phrases like these. Then add in the call to action button. This will help you in lead generation. Then comes the newsletter section, which is very important for email marketing and also if you want to grow your subscribers list. The about section helps you to give a professional introduction of yourself and set up your online personality. The featured area section this will not only help you to make your site look absolutely beautiful, it will also help you to gain a lot of trust and credibility from your new clients. The service section, here you can easily outline the services that you provide to your users. You can add the image, you can add a short introduction of the service, then you can also link the service page. The call to action section, Again, you can add in a catchy phrase like these and motivate or ask your users to take action. You can add two call to action buttons where you can easily link the important pages or the pages that you want to drive most of the traffic towards. The testimonial section, here you can easily feature the testimonials from your clients. You get to display the testimonial, you get to display their image as well as their name and their designation. This will display in a slider. The blog section where you can easily write about the latest trends in your niche. The contact section where you can easily add in all of your contact details through which your clients would easily be able to reach out to you. And then you can also embed a contact form through which your clients can easily send you a message. You also get a second dedicated call to action section. This will help you increase the chances of converting your visitors into your customers. 
You can easily integrate the Instagram section into your website, then you can also display the follow me button. This will help you to gain more followers on Instagram. And your users will also be able to check out your Instagram posts. The footer copyright section where you can easily edit the footer copyright text and add in the text of your choice. But you cannot edit the entire footer copyright text as you cannot make the theme author and the WordPress information disappear. This option is only available in our pro theme. All of the social media icons that you added on your header section will also be displayed in your footer area. Let's go to the top. Let's explore the blog page. So let's go to blog. So this is what your blog page looks like. On the left hand side are the blog posts. Then on the right hand side are the sidebar widgets. How you can add the sidebar widget is also included in the video. Make sure you don't skip any section in the video. Then let's take a look at our blog post. This is what your individual blog post looks like and you can easily select and edit the layout of your single blog posts, which is also included in the video. We will go back to the home page. Now we will head back to the sales page of the Seva Light Free WordPress theme and we will explore some of the extra and cool features that you get with the theme. Scroll down. This is the side by side comparison between the free and the pro theme. So you can check out their features. Also, if you are using the pro theme, we also have tutorial on Seva Light Pro theme. I have added the link in the description box below. We will dive straight into the features. The sales page also gives you the detailed information about Seva Light Free WordPress theme. So you can just come to the sales page. I have added the link in the description box below and check out all of the description or information in detail. Let's jump straight into the features. As I said before, you get two customizable banner options. The first is you can either feature a static image or a video with call to action. Next, you can also easily feature a slider as your banner section. Seva Light Free Theme looks as beautiful on your mobile and tablet devices as they look on PC. It also has easy to use theme settings panel with live preview. That means you can easily see the changes that you make from your customizer and you can make adjustments accordingly. You can choose from thousand and plus Google fonts. You can select your primary and secondary font as well as control the font size of your entire site with the help of typography control option. You can add in your own custom site logo and control the width or the pixel of your site logo. If you want to launch and sell your courses on your service business website, you can easily do that with Seva Light Free WordPress theme as the theme is compatible with LearnDash and Tutor LMS plugins. Seva Light Free Theme is also Gutenberg compatible. With this feature, you can add blocks, arrange elements and remove them as you want. The theme is also Elementor compatible, which means you can easily customize your pages with drag and drop interface. The theme is also optimized for speed and performance for fast loading websites. And it is also search engine optimized to boost your ranking on all major search engines. The newsletter as we saw in the demo page is strategically placed so that you can increase your subscribers list. The about section where you can easily display your bio and add a professional introduction of yourself and your website or brand. The client logo section that will also help you increase your credibility. The dedicated services section through which you can easily outline or showcase all of your services. The call to action section that will help you gain more leads and conversion on your site. You also get a portfolio page template where you can easily display your portfolios and successful projects. You also get a footer menu to display your website menus. Here you can easily feature the menu items that are already on the primary and secondary menu to improve the navigation experience or you can feature other pages like privacy policy, terms and conditions, and so on. How you can configure your footer menu with the rest of the navigation menus is also included in the video.
So as I said before, please don't skip any part in the video. You can also display your author bio on the sidebar. You can easily customize the image, display your signature, add in a short bio and also link in all of your social media profiles. Seva Light theme also gives you the option to highlight the author comment. You can also enable or disable the automatic image crop option if you need a full size image. The footer copyright editor where you can easily edit your footer copyright text. You can integrate various social medias on your header and your footer section. You also get built-in SEO settings like enabling the last update post date and breadcrumb to improve your site's performance on search engines. You can also display the post excerpts or the previews on your blog posts. And you can also select the length of your excerpt in words. You can also display the related posts of the category for each of your blog posts. You can also display the comment section on your site and also adjust the position of the comment section as you wish to. You also get a back to top button like we saw in the demo page. The theme is also widgets ready and you get 22 highly customizable widgets. You can go through all of the widgets from the sales page here. The theme is also cross browser compatible. It allows easy legibility. It is also schema friendly. RTL scripts ready, which means if you use Arabic, Persian or other RTL languages, the content on your site will look as beautiful. The theme is also translation ready, which means you can easily translate and localize your website. Seva Light Free WordPress theme provides regular updates with feature enhancements, which means Seva Light is future proof and will remain compatible with all the upcoming WordPress versions. This theme is created with clean coding practices. That means if you want to make any customization, you can easily find your way around our codes. Seva Lite also comes with extensive and beginner friendly documentation. So apart from this video, you also get an extensive step by step beginner friendly documentation that will help you with installation process, setting up your website and getting it up and ready in no time. We also have top-notch quick and friendly support. Our support team not only consists of experts, they are also absolutely friendly and quick to respond. And since the service is absolutely free for all of our free and pro theme users, you can make sure you make the best use of it. Now, I will show you how you can easily download Seva Light Free WordPress theme from our site. You have to click on download now. Give in your email address, first name and last name, then click on download now. After which, the theme will be emailed to you in your email address that you provide here in a zip format. You will also get a link to download the theme. Now that we have downloaded the theme, let me log into my WordPress dashboard and then I will show you how you can easily install and activate the theme. I have logged into my WordPress dashboard. Now, to install and activate Seva Light Free WordPress theme, You'll have to go to Appearance and you have to click on Themes. Click on Add New. Now there are two ways to do this. You can either click on Upload Theme. Then you can click on Choose File. And you can select the zip file that you downloaded. Click on Open. And you can click on Install Now. There is also another way that is you can also search for the Seva Light free theme from the search bar. Simply type in Seva Light into the search bar here. And here is the theme. This way it is even more easier for you to search for the theme as well as install and activate it. You can go for either of the methods. The choice or preference is yours. Now click on install, then click on activate. As you can see, the theme has now been installed. The next important step would be to install the recommended plugins. These plugins will come in handy when we later have to add various features to our site. So please do not miss this step. Click on begin installing plugins. 
Select all of the plugins. From the drop down option, click on Install and click on Apply. Again, select all of the plugins. From the drop down option, this time you have to select Activate and click on Apply. The plugins have been installed and activated successfully. And at this point, if you want to take a look at your site, just go over to this house icon, hover your mouse around it, then you can click on visit site. I'm going to open the link in the new tab. So currently, this is how our site looks like. Let's start configuring our site step by step. Back to our dashboard, dashboard home. Now we will access our customizer. To do that, go to appearance and click on customize. I'm going to open the customizer in the new tab and slide it right next to the dashboard tab. So these are the customizer settings that you get with Seva Light Free Theme. Let me quickly walk you through all of the settings one by one. If you go to the Pro Available option and click on the View Pro Theme, this will take you to the sales page of the Pro version of Seva Light Free Theme. I have also added the link to Seva Pro Video Tutorial in the description box below if you wish to check that out. Next, from the demo and documentation, you have the demo link. From here, you will be able to view the demo page. And if you click on the documentation link here, it will take you to the documentation page of Seva Light Free WordPress theme. There, you will find extensive step-by-step -step documentation on setting up your website using the Seva Light Free theme. From the site identity, you will be able to create a unique site identity for your site. From under appearance settings, you can change the background color of your site, add in the background image and make various adjustments. From the typography, you will be able to change the primary, the secondary, as well as change the font size of your entire site. From layout settings, you can easily change the page, the post and the default sidebar layout. Under front page settings, you will find settings and configurations options for various front page sections like banner, newsletter, about, client, service, call to action, testimonial, blog, contact and an extra call to action section. Next is the general settings. Under general settings, you can configure the header settings, integrate various social media profiles to your site. You can also configure your SEO settings, post blogs and pages settings. You can add and configure your newsletter settings. Display your Instagram feed on your website and other various miscellaneous settings. You also have Elementor settings. You will be able to create a navigation menu for your site with the help of menus customizer settings. From widgets, you will be able to add various widgets to your sidebar and to footer areas 1 to 3 and 4. From under homepage settings, you will be able to select your homepage displays. And from footer settings, you can easily edit and add in the footer copyright text of your choice. Lastly, with the help of additional settings, you can easily customize the appearance and layout of your site. So that was a very quick and brief introduction of all of the customizer settings. Now I'll go through all of the customizer settings one by one. Let's start with site identity. The first option is to add in a site logo. If you have created a logo for your site, then you can easily display it on your website. You only have to click on select logo option. Click on select files. Select your logo and click on open. All the images that you upload from here will be stored in the media library section over here. 
Let me upload all of the files at once. I have also added the recommended image sizes in the description box below. Please make sure to check them out before you upload your images. Now we will select our site logo once again. Click on select. You have the option to crop the image or you can just skip cropping. I'm going to skip cropping. And here is your site logo. You can also determine the width of your logo with the help of logo width option here. So you can just decrease the size or you can also increase it or you can just simply add in the value. And the changes that you make will be seen in real time. Now instead of logo, if you want to display your site title and tagline, you can also do that. So let me just remove the logo for a while. I'm going to click on the remove button here. Now, if you don't have a site logo yet, you can easily make your site title and tagline display. You can change the site title, just remove the title that is already here, then give in the title of your choice. You can do the same for the tagline. If you scroll down, you can also easily change your site title font size and you can also select the font style depending upon the font family you have selected. So just select from the list of thousand and plus Google fonts that are available for you to choose from. Let's select this one. And as you can see, the font family has been changed. You can go ahead and play around with the options. Then you can select the one that you like the most. And depending upon the font family you have selected, you can also select the style. And you can also change your site title font size. If you want to increase your site title font size, simply slide this button over. If you want to make it appear smaller, just slide this button under. So this is how you can configure your site title and tagline. And like we did earlier, if you want to have a site logo, simply click on select logo, select the logo, click on select, skip cropping. Then you can make your site title and tagline disappear by simply unchecking this little box right here. After this, only your site logo will be displayed. Now we will click on publish. Let's go back to our site and we will give it a refresh. And as you can see, the changes have been made. Let's go back. There is one more option that is site icon. To add in the site icon, Click on select site icon first, then you have to select the site icon of your choice. Click on select. You have the option to skip cropping or to crop the image. I'm going to skip cropping once again. And this right here is your site icon. I would highly recommend you to add in a site icon because it not only helps your users to identify your site, it also helps you to build your brand identity. After this is done, click on publish. Now if you go back to your site and give it a refresh, you'll see the icon is also displaying here. Let's go back. Next, we will add various social media profiles on our site which will display right on top of your header section. To do that, go to general settings go to social media settings. The first thing you have to ensure is if this toggle was not already enabled, you have to enable it first of all. Now the process is very very simple. Just click on add new links option here. Now all you have to do is search for the social media icon that you want to add. So for example, if you want to add in Facebook, simply type in Facebook and the Facebook icon will be displayed here. Click on the icon. Now inside the link, you have to copy and paste the link to your Facebook page profile. So for example, if I want to link in the Blossom Themes official Facebook page, I'll have to copy and paste the link to official Blossom Themes Facebook page. After you add in the link, you will see a tiny Facebook will appear here. Now following the same process, you can keep on adding more social media links. 
I have added more social media links to our site following the same process. After you are done adding all of the social media links, you can click on publish. Let's go to our site and give it a refresh and you can see all of the social media links that we added from the customizer is now displaying on our site. Let's go back and back. Next, we will set our home page or our landing page. It is important you configure the settings before you move ahead to other settings. So click on home page settings. From your home page displays, you can either go for your latest post or a static page. If you select your latest posts, your home page will display all of your most recent posts. Now we have not created any blog posts, so it is empty. But once you begin generating blog posts, all of your most recent posts will begin to appear one by one on your home page. If you select a static page, you will have a separate static page. Then you will also have a separate blog page where you can easily list your latest blog posts. So just click on it and this will be your blog page while your home or your landing page will be separate. You can easily go for either of the options but keep in mind that if you select your latest posts, you will not be able to see the front page sections or make any configurations on the front page section settings. We will select a static page as our home page display because our home and post pages are already created in default and by default they are also added on our navigation menu. We do not have to create a separate home page and a separate blog page. So we will just click on publish. Let's go back. Now, after site identity, there are appearance settings and layout settings, but I will come back to the settings later on after I have configured the front page settings. So let's straight away go into our front page settings. The first option is the banner section. Under banner options, there are three different options available. We are going to select a static or a video call to action banner for our site, but let me also explain to you other banner options that we have here. The first one is to disable the banner section. So if you select this option, your banner section will be disappeared completely. So if you do not want a banner section on your site, you can go for the first option. The third option is to have your banner as a slider. So when you select your banner as a slider, you have the option to select the content style of your slider. You can either select latest posts or you can select the category. Now if you select the latest posts, all of your latest blog posts will be displayed on your banner slider. You can also select the number of slides from here. Just slide this button over or you can slide it under. Another option is you can select the category as your slider content style and when you select category you have one more option you can select from the list of available categories currently because we have not created a blog post we have not created any categories which is why no options are displayed but after you create blog posts after you create categories it will display the category option whatever category you select the blog posts from that particular category will be displayed as a banner slider. Furthermore, there are options like slider auto that will enable your slider to auto transition, which means your slider can go from one to another without having to click anywhere. And with the help of slider loop, your slider will keep on going on in a loop. And you can also enable or disable your slider caption with the help of the slider caption option and with the help of full image option you will be able to display full size image in your slider which means the featured image that will be displayed on your slider will not be cropped next you can also select from various slider animation options that are here 
and you can select the slider speed. You can either slide it over or under to easily control the speed of the slider. And with the help of slider read more option, you can edit the read more text here. Remove the text that is already here, then add in the text of your choice. So this is how you can easily change the slide more text. So these options are pretty simple, but if you still have any more difficulties, please leave your queries down in the comment section below. I will answer all of your questions. I will also leave a link in the description box below to creating a support ticket. You can easily reach out to our support team. It's absolutely free and our support team is super friendly. They are super helpful. Please contact them if you face any issues or problems or if you just want to know about our themes and other information. Now, let's get back to the video and the third option is static or a video call to action banner. When you select a static or a video call to action banner, you can either display an image like this on your banner or you can display a video. So if you want to add in a video, just click on select video. Then you can select the video that you have added. You can click on choose video. After which the video will be played on your banner. You can also provide a link to your video if you have a YouTube channel. So simply copy and paste the link to your YouTube video here. After which your YouTube video will be displayed here on your banner. Instead of this, you can also add in a header image. This is the image that is suggested, which is also displaying here in default. If you want to add in a new image, just click on add new image. Then you can select the image of your choice. Click on select and crop. If you want to crop your image, you also have the option to do that, but I'm going to skip cropping. And the image that you add will be displayed on your banner. I'm going to select the suggested image for this one. Let's scroll down. You can also easily customize your banner section title, subtitle, as well as description and also the label. So all you have to do is just remove the title that is already here. Then add in the title of your choice. You can do the same for the subtitle, which will appear right on top as well as for the description. You can also stretch out your description box from here. Next, you can add in the button label of your choice. So instead of get started, just remove the label that is here. Add in the label of your choice. Then inside of the button link box, you have to copy and paste the link to the page or the post where you want your visitors to land on when they click on this button here. So you can easily link your sales page or the page where you want to drive the most traffic towards into the button link box. I have just added a random button link here. The last option is to select the banner caption alignment from right to left. You can go for either of the options. Okay, I'm going to change the title to the way it was before, but you can easily customize it as per your choice. After you are done, you have to click on publish. Let's go back and the next is the newsletter section. Before we make any configuration from the newsletter section here, we have to go back to our dashboard and create a newsletter first. So let's head back to our dashboard. We will go to Blossom Themes email newsletter and click on add new. Let's fill in the details starting with the title. From field settings, you can either select name and email or you can select only email. If you select name and email, both name and email placeholders will be displayed in your newsletter. 
but if you select only email, only email placeholder will be displayed. I'm going to select both name and email. And if you want to change in the label, just remove it, then type in the label or the text of your choice. You can do the same for email and submit button labels. You can also enable the GDPR checkbox, then add in a form note, which is a short message asking your visitors or users to subscribe to you. Let's go to the top. You can display the background from either background color or you can also select a background image. If you want to add in a background image, you have to select background image. Then you have to click on upload image and select the image of your choice. For this particular newsletter, I'm going to select the background color. So click on the background color option. Now click on the background color. It's very easy. You only have to select the colors from the color palette. You can move around the pointer and the slider to select the color shade of your choice. Or you can easily add in the hex value. After that, to select the font color, again, click on the font color option here. And you can select from the range of color options that are available here. I'm going to select the classic black. And after this is done, let's click on publish. So the newsletter has been published. Now we will go back to our customizer. To add in a newsletter section, you must include the Blossom Themes email newsletter widget as described here. So click on add a widget. You can either manually search for the widget or type in the widget's name and search for it directly from the search bar. You can use either of these approaches to easily feature any widgets that are available here. Now just type in email newsletter into the search bar or you can just type in email. Select the widget. You can add in the title if you wish to. I'm going to skip adding the title. To select the newsletter, click on the drop down option. So for now, the newsletter is not being shown. What we will do is we will refresh our customizer tab just so that all of the changes that we have made from the dashboard will also be reflected here. We will go to front page settings, back to newsletter section, click on add a widget, search for the email newsletter widget, click on it. Now from the drop down option, the newsletter that we have just created is displaying. Click on it. After which the newsletter will be displayed. If you want to enable the GDPR, just check into this little box and the GDPR will be enabled. If you want to upload the newsletter icon, click on upload. Select your newsletter icon, click on select. And here your newsletter icon will be displayed. Click on done and click on publish. Let's go back to our site, scroll down and give it a refresh. And as you can see, the email newsletter section has now been added to our site. And this looks very attractive as well. Back to our customizer and the next is the about section. Before we make any configuration from here, we have to go back to our dashboard and we have to create an about page. So let's head back to our dashboard once again. We will go to pages and click on add new. Add in the title. Then add in the content. Now go to page. To set the featured image, click on set featured image, then select the featured image of your choice. Click on set featured image. You can also add in the excerpt if you wish to. It is optional to add in an excerpt, but the content that you add in your excerpt will be displayed on your homepage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the content here and I'm going to paste it as an excerpt. So just copy the text and I'm going to paste it here. 
click on publish so the about page has been published and now we will go back to our customizer and we will just give it a refresh so that the changes that we have made are also reflected here now scroll down go to front page settings and to about section once again we will come back to the topmost settings later on just click on add a widget and as it is given here we will add in the blossom featured page widget so here's the widget click on it scroll down from page you have to select the about page that we have just created so after you select the about page the content of your about page will be displayed here and the content that you added on your excerpt will be displayed on the about section of your home page now to display the featured image that we added earlier you have to check in to the show featured image option which will display the featured image on your about section if you want to display the full page content you can just check into the full page content option and the full page content will be displayed on your about section if you have a very short about section i would recommend you to check into this option however if the content of your about page is quite long you can uncheck this option and you can check into the show read more option this will display a read more button and you can also change the read more text from here so this is how you can change it now let's go to the top from here you can also add in the secondary image for your about section which will be displayed here so let's try adding a secondary image click on select image then select the image of your choice click on choose image and your secondary image will be displayed here if you want to change the background image which is displaying right over here you can just click on change image then add in the image of your choice or if you simply want to remove the background image you can click on the remove button that is given here after you are done click on publish now let's head back to our site and we will give it a refresh and as you can see the about section has been added to our site back to our customizer and the next is the client section it is absolutely easy to add in your client section so just click on add a widget and as it is mentioned here you have to add in the blossom client logo widget so select the client logo widget from the list of available widgets here click on it add in the title here now click on add another logo click on upload select the logo that you want to add click on select inside of the featured link box you can easily add in the link to the page or the post where you want your visitors to land on or if you do not want to add in the link yet or if you don't have the link you can simply skip this portion then to add in another logo click on add another logo click on upload select another logo click on select then you have to keep on adding all of the logos following the same process after you are finished adding all of the logos you can click on the apply button and here all of your featured client logos will be displayed in a slider manner click on done and click on publish let's go back to our site and we will give it a refresh and here our client logo section is now displaying let's head back to our customizer back next is the service section as it is mentioned here 
you have to add in the Blossom icon text widget to add services to your service section. So click on add a widget and here is the Blossom icon text widget selected by clicking on it. Now you have to add in the title of your service section. Then you have to add in the description. You can also stretch out the description box from here. To add in the image, you simply have to click on upload. Then just select the image that you want to add to your service section. Click on select. Scroll down. You can also add in the read more label here. Then you can add in your featured link here. In this case, you can add in the link to your detailed service page. When your visitors click on the read more button here, they will land on the page of which the link you have added over here. Click on done. Following the same process, I have added two more services to our service section. After you are done adding all of the services, you can click on done and here all of the services will be listed. Next, let's add in the title to our services section. To do that, you have to add in the text widget. So click on add a widget, then type in text into the search bar and here it has appeared, click on it. So what we will do is we will minimize the text widget and we will drag it right on top. Now let's maximize the widget. Let's add in the title. Then we will also add in the description here. And as you can see the title and description for the services section is also displaying. Click on done and we will go to the options at the top. The first option is to enable or disable the service count. This is the service count. You can easily disable them by disabling the toggle and you can enable them back on by enabling the toggle. You can also change the button label of your services section from view all services to anything else that you wish to. Just remove the label that is already here, then you can add in the label of your choice. Next, you can add in the featured link inside of the button link box. Click on publish to save the changes. Now let's go back to our site and give it a refresh. As you can see, the services have now been added to our services section. Back to our customizer. Next is the call to action section. To add in the call to action section, you have to search and add the Blossom call to action widget. So click on add a widget and here is our call to action widget. Click on it. Now let's fill in all of the details starting with the title. Currently the title is not showing because the background color has been selected as white. Let's select a different color. I'm just going to slide the slider over. And as you can see, our title is now being displayed. Let's add in the description as well. And our description is also showing. Next, we have to select the number of call to action buttons. It can either be one or two. We will select two call to action buttons. Now let's add in the button one label. Then you have to add in the featured link to the page or the post where you want your visitors to land on inside of the button one link box. And here our button one label is displayed. We will do the same with the button two label. You can easily select the background color for your call to action section.
click on select color and you can select the color from the palette here you can also move around your pointer and your slider to get to the color of your choice or if you do not want to add in a background color just click on clear and you can also upload the image click on upload select the image of your choice click on select and here your background image has been added to your call to action section you can also select the button alignment from right to left to centered so after you are done click on done and click on publish let's go back to our site we will scroll down and give our site a refresh and as you can see the call to action section has now been added to our site and it looks something like this let's go back to our customizer next is the testimonial section we will go through all of the options at the top later on we have to first of all add in the blossom testimonial widget so click on add a widget from the search bar type in testimonial select the widget now you have to add in the name of your client their designation and their words of testimonial for your service let's fill in the details we will start by adding the name then you have to add in the designation then finally add in the testimonial from your client to upload the image of your client click on upload select the image click on select and the client image that you add will be displayed here after you are done click on done now to add in more testimonials you have to follow the same process following the same process i have added more testimonials to our testimonial section After you finish adding all of the testimonials, they will be displayed in a slider carousel manner. Now let's go to the top and we will explore the options here. The first option is to enable or disable the testimonial count. This is the testimonial count. If you disable the button here, the testimonial count will not be displayed anymore. You can either keep it enabled or disabled. The choice is yours. Next, you can change the section subtitle, which is currently showing as testimonial. Just remove the label or the subtitle that is already here. Then you can type in the title of your choice. Next, you can change the section title, which is currently labeled as words from people. Let's remove this one and we will add a different or a new section title. And whatever title you add in here will be displayed over here as well. You can do the same with the section description. Another option is to enable or disable the testimonial auto transition. Currently, the testimonials are transitioning from one to another without having to click anywhere. If you disable this option, the auto transitioning feature will be disabled and your readers or your visitors and users will have to click on either of the arrows to be able to read the testimonial that is already here. We will enable it back on. Next, you can also enable or disable the testimonial loop. So when the testimonial comes to an end, it goes on in a loop. If you disable the option, the testimonial after it comes to an end will not go on in a loop. You can also either speed up the transitioning of testimonial by sliding this button over 
or under. With the help of font size option, you can either increase or you can decrease the font size of your testimonial content. With the help of button label options, you will be able to edit the view all testimonials label that is already here. You simply have to remove it, then add in the label or the text of your choice. And inside of the button link option, you can easily copy and paste the link to the page or the post where you want your visitors to land on when they click on this button right over here. After you are done configuring all of the options, you have to click on publish. Now let's go back to our site and we will just give it a refresh. And as you can see, the testimonial section is now displaying on our side. Let's go back and back to the blog section. The first option is to enable or disable the blog section. So this is the blog section right over here. All of the latest published articles will be displayed in your blog section. If you disable the option, the blog section altogether will not be shown on the home page of your website. If you enable this option, the blog section will be displayed. Now to explore further on the option, let me go back to the dashboard and we will create our very first blog post. All you have to do is go to posts, click on add new. Now you have to add in the title and the content of your blog. Let's start by adding the title. After this, we move on to the right hand side to the categories. Now we will create and assign the categories to this particular blog post. So click on add new category, then give your category a name. Then either click on enter or you can click on add new category. I will create some more categories following the same process. Now you can check into these boxes to assign these categories. And if you want to remove any categories that are already assigned to this post, you can simply uncheck these boxes. Scroll down, you can also add in the tags. Make sure that if you add in the tags, you separate them with the commas or the enter key. Now finally, we will set in the featured image. Scroll down, click on set featured image. Now you have to select the image of your choice. Click on set featured image. And finally, we will click on publish. Now the post has been published. You can either view the post by clicking on this button here or the link that is given here. I have also added a link in the description box below to a video that will give you in-depth tutorial on how you can create your first post or a page using the Gutenberg editor. That video is very helpful and easy to follow. Make sure you check that video out. So now we will go to our post and see how it has turned out. So I'm opening the link from here and I'm opening the link in the new tab. As you can see, this is how our blog post looks like. Let's go back to our dashboard and back to dashboard home to all posts. So this is the only post that I have created so far. Let me pause the video, create some more posts so that I will be able to show you the differences even more clearly. As you can see from the screen, I have created a few more posts. Now we will access our customizer once again. So go to appearance and go to customize. Let me cross out the old customizer tab. And the reason I accessed the customizer tab once again, rather than working in the older tab was because I just wanted to refresh the tab and see the changes that we made from our dashboard. So we will go to front page settings once again and go to block section. 
And as you can see, all of the latest articles that we created are now displaying on our blog section. Now we will go into the customizer settings options here. The first one is to change the section title. You can change it from latest articles to anything else that you wish to. Just remove it. Then add in the title of your choice. You can do the same for the section subtitle and change it from blog to anything else that you wish to. You can also add in the section description here. And you can change in the read more label from read more to anything else that you want. You just have to remove the title that is already here then add in the title of your choice. And you can do the same for the view all label, which will change the label that is already here. After you are done, click on publish. We will go back to our site and give it a refresh. Scroll down and here is our blog section. Let's go back. Next is the contact section. To add in the contact details, you have to add in the contact widget first. So click on add a widget. And here is the contact widget that we are looking for. Click on it. Now you have to fill in the details. Let's start by adding the title and we will also add in the description. Afterwards, we will add in telephone, email and address. If you wish to add in the social media icons, you have to click on add social icon. Search for the social icon of your choice. For example, if you want to add in Facebook, search for Facebook and the icon will appear here. Click on the icon and inside of the link box, you have to copy and paste the link to your official Facebook page. Following the same process, I have added more social media links. After you are done adding all of the social media links, click on apply. And all of your social media profiles or the links or icons will be displayed here. Click on done. Now to add in the contact form, click on add a widget once again. You have to search for the text widget and select the text widget. Now add in the title. Inside the description box, you have to copy and paste the contact form shortcode, which will display a contact form on your contact section. So we will head back to the dashboard, then go to contact plugins, click on contact forms. Here is your contact form one. We will just copy the shortcode from here. Go back to the customizer and we will simply paste it here inside of the description box and here is your contact form. Click on done. There are more options at the top and that is to change the contact section title from contact me to anything else that you want. Just like how we did with other sections, titles and subtitles, you can simply remove the title here and replace it with the title or the label of your choice. Then you can do the same for a section subtitle you can add in the section description if you wish to from here. If you want to add in the background image, simply click on select image and select the background image of your choice. Then click on choose image. The last option is to change the contact section social title, which is currently showing as follow me on. You can again change it to the title of your choice by removing it and simply adding in the label of your choice. Click on publish to save the changes. Now we will go back to our site. Scroll down and give your site a refresh. And as you can see, your contact section is now displaying on your site with the contact details on the left and the contact form also here. 
let's go back and the last one is the call to action 2 section. The process of adding call to action section number 2 is the same as adding the call to action section which we already added here. So scroll down, it's very very easy. All you have to do is add in the call to action widget as it is given here. So click on add to widget and click on call to action widget over here. Then fill out the details. Select your number of call to action buttons. This time I'm going to select only one. Then add in the button one label. Then inside of the button one link box, you have to add in the featured link to the page or the post where you want your visitors to land on when they click on the button one, which will appear after you add in your featured link. So just paste in your featured link for your button one and it will be displayed over here. If you select two call to action buttons, then two call to action buttons will be displayed here and you have to repeat the same process for your second call to action button if you choose to add in two call to action buttons. Now you can select the button alignment from right, left and centered and also select the background color. Simply click on select color. The process is same. Select the color from the color palette over here. Then move around your pointer and your slider to get to the color of your choice. I'm selecting the default color. You can also upload the image as the background. You simply have to click on upload and select the image of your choice, which will then be displayed as the background for your second call to action section. Click on done and click on publish. Now go back to your site. We will give it a refresh. And as you can see, the call to action section number two has also been added to your site. Back to our customizer and we are finally done with our front page settings. So let's go back and we will also go to the top. After site identity, we had left out appearance and the layout settings. So let's go to appearance settings now. The first option is colors. From here, you can select the background color of your site. Click on select color. Then you can select the color from the palette here. If you want the background color to be white, it can be white. Or you can simply put it back to default by clicking on default. Next option is to add in the background image. Just click on select image. Then you have to select the image of your choice. Click on choose image. After which the image that you have selected will be shown as the background of your site. You also have more options from under preset like default, fill screen, fit to screen, repeat and custom. You can also change the image position to different directions from here. Then you can change the image size from original to fit to screen to fill screen. And you have two more options to repeat or not repeat the background image and whether or not to scroll with page. You can easily go ahead, play around with these options and select the one that you like the most. I'm not going to add in the background image for my site, so I'm going to remove it. But if you have added one, don't forget to hit on the publish button to save the changes as well. Next is the typography. From here, you can select the primary, the secondary font, as well as the control the font size of your entire site. Let's change the primary font. So from the drop down options, as I mentioned before, you get thousand and plus Google fonts for your site. So you can go ahead and select the one that you want to add in. And as you can see, the primary font of your site is now changed. Now we will also change the secondary font. So again, from the drop down option, just select the font of your choice and the secondary font has been changed as well. The change will be reflected throughout your site. 
If you wish to change in the font size, make it either bigger or smaller. Slide this button over and the font size will be bigger. You can easily slide this button under to decrease the font size of your site. Again, you can play around with the option and save your preferences. I'm going to set them back to the way they were before. If you have made any changes, again, you have to hit on the publish button to save the changes. Let's go back. Next, we will go to the layout settings. From under layout settings, you can change the page, the post and the default sidebar layout. From page sidebar layout, you can change the general sidebar layout for pages. There are four options that are available here. You can easily select any of the layout. Let's go to our about page. And let's try changing the layout of our about page. Currently, the first option has been selected in default. If you want to select the right sidebar layout, just click on the fourth option and as you can see, the right sidebar layout has been added. You can also go for the full width centered layout. And this is what it looks like. You can also go for the left sidebar layout. I'm going to stick with the default sidebar layout, but you can select the layout of your choice. Also, whatever layout you select from four of the options, it will be applied to all of the individual pages. Another option is post sidebar layout. So we will go to our blog page and we will open one of our blog posts. The sidebar layout selected in default is the right sidebar layout. You can go for the one without any sidebar layout or you can go for the full width centered sidebar layout. The layout option that you select will be applied to all of the individual blog posts that you add to your site. We will select the right sidebar layout as the default sidebar layout. The third one is the default sidebar layout. This is the general sidebar layout for your whole site. To explore this option, we will go to our blog page. So as you can see, the right sidebar layout has been selected in default. We will select the one without any sidebar and the changes will be seen accordingly. You can go ahead, make your preferences and click on publish. We will now go to general settings. The first option is header settings. From your header settings options, you can easily edit the default phone number. You can add in your email address. You can also add in the header button over here. So you only have to remove the details that are already given here, then add in the phone number and email address to your service. You can also select the header button label. So instead of inquiry, Let's add in contact. Then what you can do is inside of the header button link box, you can easily copy and paste the link to your contact page. We have not created our contact page yet. So we will leave this button link blank. Or if you wish to feature any other pages, then you can also add in the feature link here and you can change in the header button label accordingly. You also have the option to allow your users to open the link that you add here in the new tab. So you can easily either enable or disable the toggle. If you have made any changes, don't forget to hit on publish. Let's go back. Next is the social media settings. We have already gone into this. Another one is SEO settings. The first option is to enable the last updated post date. So every time you update your blog post, the updated information will be displayed here. If you disable this option, then the updated option will not be displayed here and only the published date of the blog post will be displayed. We will enable it back on. Next option is to enable the breadcrumb. So let's open one of our blog posts from here. This right here is your breadcrumb. If you disable this option, the breadcrumb will not be displayed anymore. 
Let's enable it back on and you can also change the breadcrumb home text from home to anything else that you wish to. The text that you add will be displayed here. I'm going to change it back to home. I would highly recommend you to enable your last updated post date as well as to enable your breadcrumb because they not only contribute to your SEO, it also helps your users to easily navigate their way throughout the site. We will go back to the blog page and back. Next is the post blogs and pages settings. The first option is to hide prefix in archive page. Archive pages are your tags and your category pages and so on. So let's go to one of the category page. Currently, the category prefix is not being displayed. If you disable the option, the category prefix will be displayed. Let's enable it back on. The second option is blog post image crop. So when you add in a featured image to your blog post, if the image is not as per the recommended image size, it gets cropped automatically to fit in the image size requirement for the theme. But if you enable this option, regardless of the size of your featured image, it will not be cropped anymore. Right now, you cannot see any changes because most of the images that I have added are as per the recommended image size. You can either enable or disable the option. The choice is yours. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you enable this option, it avoids the automatic cropping of featured image in your home archive and search blog posts. Another option is to enable the blog excerpt. This is your blog excerpt. If you disable this option, then full blog post will be shown for each of your blog posts. But if you enable this option, only the post excerpt will be displayed. You can also select the excerpt length from here in words. Slide this button over to select higher number of words. So if you choose 85, 85 words will be shown as your blog excerpt. And that will be applied for the rest of your blog posts that you have added. Another option is to select the featured blog post for your blog page. So we will head back to our blog page from the breadcrumb. Click here, then select the blog that you want to feature right on top as the featured post for your blog page. You can select any one that you wish to. So let's try selecting the first option. And as you can see, this blog post will be displayed as the featured blog. You can select any blog post that you wish to display as the featured blog post. The options from single post image crop to show featured image affect your single posts. So we will go into a single blog post. The first option is single post image crop. Again, this option is similar to blog post image crop. The only difference is that the single post image crop, if you enable this option, it will avoid the automatic cropping of the featured image that you have added for your single blog post. So even if the featured image that you have added for your single blog post is not as per the recommended image size, when you enable this option, the image that you have added will not be cropped anymore. I'm going to disable it. Another option is to hide the author section. If you scroll down, this is the author section. If you enable it, the author section will be hidden. As opposed to when you disable the option, the author section will be displayed. You can also change the author section subtitle from about the author to anything else that you wish to. Just remove the title that is already here, then you can add in the title of your choice. I have randomly added a text. You can add in the text or the label or subtitle of your choice. Another option is to show the related post. These are the related posts. 
So if you disable this option, the related post will not be displayed anymore. We will enable them back on. You can also change the title of the related post from you may also like to anything else that you wish to. With the show comments option, you can easily enable or disable the comment section or the comments in your single blog posts. Another option is to hide the category. For each of the blog posts, you can see that the categories are displaying. If you enable to hide the category, then the categories will not be displayed for any of the blog posts. As opposed to when you disable them, the categories will be displayed for all of the blog posts that you have added or assigned the categories to. Another option is to hide the post author. So if you go to the top, this one is the post author. If you enable this option, the post author will not be displayed anymore. And if you disable this option, the post author will be displayed. Another option is to hide the posted date. Now, if you enable this option, the posted date along with the updated date will not be shown at all. Let's disable it. And another option is to show or hide the author image. If you disable this option, the featured image will not be shown anymore. So you can either disable or you can enable it. Make your preferences and you can easily click on publish to save the changes. Back next is the newsletter settings. So if we go to our site, scroll down, we have already added newsletter to our homepage right underneath our banner section. Let's go back. With the help of this option, you will be able to feature newsletter on your single blog posts. So the first thing you have to do is to enable to show the newsletter section. Let's scroll all the way down to the bottom, right where newsletter is supposed to show. Now inside of the newsletter shortcode box, you have to copy and paste the newsletter shortcode. So we will go back to our dashboard, to dashboard home. Go to Blossom Themes email newsletter. Click on all newsletters. This is the newsletter that we had created earlier. If you want to feature a new newsletter, you can always create a different newsletter by clicking on the add new option and following the same process as I showed you earlier. Then what you have to do is you have to copy the short code. I'm going to feature the same newsletter. So I will copy the short code from here. Just click on copy. We will go back to our customizer and we will paste it here. And as you can see, the newsletter has now been added to our single blog posts and it will be displayed in each of the blog posts that you have added. Click on publish. Let's go back. Now we will go to Instagram settings. Let's go to the top and we will go back to the home page. Before we enable the toggle from here, we have to make certain configurations. So click the link over here. I'm going to open the link in the new tab. Now click on connect with Instagram. Because I have previously connected the Blossom Themes Instagram account with other websites, it is showing me a message like this. For you, it will ask you to fill in your login credentials and then click on authorize or allow. After this, your access token, username and the rest of the information will be filled in automatically. You can make changes to your number of photos, photos per row profile link text. You can also enable or disable the last two options. Click on save changes. You must have noticed that after you click on save changes, your connect with Instagram button changes to reconnect with Instagram which means the configuration has happened successfully. Now we will close the tabs here and go back to customizer. Before we enable the toggle, we will go all the way down to the bottom, right where Instagram is supposed to display and we will enable the option. 
the instagram section is not showing so what we will do is we will disable and we will enable it back on once again this will refresh the customizer and your instagram section will then be displayed click on publish we will go back to our site let's scroll all the way down to the bottom and give it a refresh and here your instagram feed is now displaying on your site let's go back the last one is the miscellaneous settings. So the first option is to enable or disable the animations to the different sections of your website. As you scroll up, you will see these animations. So when you disable the option, that animation will not be shown anymore to any of the sections on your website. As opposed to when you enable them, the animation will be displayed here. Next, you can change the 4 or 4 image from here. Just click on remove or you can click on change image and you can select the image of your choice. And if you are wondering what the 4 or 4 error page looks like, just go to your site and type in 4 or 4, click on enter. This is what the 4 or 4 error looks like. Just in case if any of your visitors or users come to your site and they click a link to a page or a post that does not exist anymore, they will be shown this message. Let's go back. From here, you can change the button label for your 404 error page from go to home page to anything else that you wish to. Currently, it is displaying as go to home page. You can change it from here. Click on publish. Let's go back. So that was it about general settings. Let's go back. The next option is Elementor settings. So Elementor is a page builder plugin which allows you to customize the content of any page. After you enable this option, it lets you edit your home page using Elementor, which overrides all the section and content of your home page. So you can easily enable the toggle and you can override your home page content with the help of Elementor settings option. I'm going to disable it, click on publish and we will go back. Next, before we go to menus, I want to show you how you can easily create a contact page for your site. To do that, you have to go back to your dashboard, then go to the contact plugins, go to contact forms, copy the contact form shortcode, now go to pages click on add new add in the title of your contact page then you can add in the message of your contact page now click on enter you have to paste the contact form shortcode that you just copied click on publish and the contact page has now been published let's open and view the contact page in the new tab. This is what our contact page looks like. Here is the message that we added and here is the contact form that we embedded. We will go back to our customizer and now finally we will go to the menus. There are two ways through which you can create menus for your site. One from the customizer and next you can also create it from the dashboard. For this video tutorial, I'm going to be creating menus from the customizer itself, but I have also added a link in the description box below to a video that will give you in-depth tutorial on how you can easily add the navigation menu to your site. That video is also very helpful, make sure you check it out. Now as you can see, the primary menu has already been created in default. So I'm going to delete this menu so that I can show you everything right from the start. Click on create new menu. Now give your menu a name. So I have added primary menu as the menu name. You can easily go ahead and add in the name of your choice. Now we will select menu location as primary, which is the location right here. Now click on next. Now click on add items. You can add custom links pages, post, portfolio, categories, 
tags or portfolio categories to your primary menu. Let's add few pages like home, blog, contact and we will also add the about page. If you wish to, you can also add in the categories and other items. The items that you added are now displaying on the navigation menu. Since the title of our about page is a bit longer, we will change the label. To do that, go to your about page item, click on it. From the navigation label, remove the title or the label that is already here. Now we will add in the navigation label as about. And as you can see, the label has changed. We will now minimize the menu item. If you wish to, you can also sort and toggle your menu items. Just drag the menu item and drop it to the position that you wish to drop it. You can do it with all of the menu items. So you can now click on publish. Let's go back to our site and give it a refresh. As you can see, the navigation menu has now been added to our site. Let's go back and back. Now following the same process, we will also add the secondary menu and the footer menu. Click on create new menu once again. Give your menu a name. Select the menu location as secondary. Now click on next. Click on add items. This time I will add some of the categories. Let's add all of them. After you are done, click on publish. As you can see, the menu has already been added to our site. Now if you go back to our site, give it a refresh. And here you can see the menu has been added. Let's go back. Now we will finally create our footer menu. So let's minimize our secondary menu. Click on create new menu and give our menu a name. Now select the menu location as footer. We will scroll all the way down to the bottom. Now click on next. Click on add items. If you wish to, you can easily feature all of the menu items that you have already added in your primary and secondary menu. But footer menu is also very helpful if you want to add in your privacy policies, your terms and conditions pages and so on. So for that, we will use the custom links. Let's add in the link text as privacy policy. Then we will copy and paste the link to our privacy policy page over here. Click on add to menu. And as you can see, the privacy policy page has now been added to our footer menu. Click on add items and we will follow the same process for terms and conditions. Click on add to menu. After which the terms and conditions page will now be featured on your footer menu. We will now publish the footer menu as well. Now let's go back to our site. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and give it a refresh. As you can see, the footer menu is now displaying on our site. We will go to the top and back to our customizer. And we will go to the widgets. The first option is to add in a sidebar widget. To explore this option, we will go to the block page. And as soon as we go into our block page, you can see that the default sidebar can now be edited. There are already a bunch of sidebar that are already showing here and here as well. Let me quickly remove all of them one by one. To add in a sidebar widget, click on add a widget. So the first widget we will add is Blossom Author Bio. Click on it. This will display the author information on your sidebar. And you have to now fill in the details. We will skip adding the title. So let's add in the author name. 
You can display the photo from either Gravatar or Uploaded Photo. Let's upload a photo. Click on Uploaded Photo, click on Upload. Now you have to select an image of your choice. Click on Select. And that particular image will be displayed in your Author Bio section on your sidebar. Now let's add in a short description about the author. Now to display the signature, if you have already created an image of your signature, you can click on Uploaded Photo, click on Upload and easily select your signature image. But if you have not created the signature image yet, you can also type out your signature. Just click on Text option, then type in your name. And your signature will be displayed here. You can also add in the button label here, then add in the featured link inside of the button link box here. In this case, you can easily add in the link to your about page and add in the button label as about. So let's go to our site, go to about page and we will just copy the link, come back and we will paste it here. And as you can see, the button is now displaying here after we added the link. I want to change the button label to something that sounds more fun. So we will remove this and add in a different label. I have added get to know me better. You can go with the text or the label of your choice. You can also feature the social media profiles right beneath your author bio. So click on add social profile. The process is same and it is very simple. From inside search social icons box, you have to type in the name of the social media icon that you wish to add. So for example, if it is Facebook, type in Facebook and select the icon. Now inside of the link box, you have to copy and paste the link to your Facebook account. And following the same process, you can keep on adding more social media icons. Click on apply and here all of the social media icons are displaying. Click on done. We will click on publish. Now if you go back to your site, go to your blog page, scroll down, you can see the author bio has now been added to your sidebar. Back to our customizer. Now to add in a second widget, you have to click on add widget. You can easily select from the list of highly customizable widgets. So let's select one for us. Let's add in Blossom recent post. This widget will display all of your recent posts on your sidebar. Click on the widget. You can easily change the title if you wish to. Just remove the title then add in the title of your choice. You can select the number of posts from here. You can either increase or decrease the number of posts. Next, you have more options. If you want to show the post thumbnail, you can check into this little box and it will show the post thumbnails. If you want to show the post date, you can check into this box and it will also display the post dates. You can select the style layout from 1, 2 and 3. Currently, the style layout number one is chosen. Let's select style number two, which looks something like this and style layout number three, which looks something like this. I will stick with style layout number one, but you can choose the layout of your choice. Now you can also let your users open the post you have here in the new tab if you check into this little box here. Click on done and click on publish. We will also add in another widget. So click on add a widget once again. This time we will add blossom post category slider. This will display the posts from the category that you choose in a slider. So select the widget. We will add in the title.
as categories and select the category. You can select from four of the different categories available. Let's select mentor. And all of the posts from under mentor category will be displayed under your categories widget. You can also select the number of slides. Let's select three. And the posts will display in a slider. There are more options at the bottom. You can either check in or uncheck them as per your choice. And the changes will be seen here. We will also check into the last option and click on done. For our fourth widget, click on add a widget once again. This time we will add in. Let's see what we can add. Let's add in Blossom popular post. This will display all of your popular post on your sidebar. So select the widget by clicking on it. Now you can change the title from here. Select your number of posts from here. You can select popular based on post views or comment count. We will select post views. Select or unselect the last three options. Then finally, select the style layout from 1, 2, or 3. Let's go with style layout number 3 this time and click on done. Now for our fifth widget, click on add a widget and let's add in Blossom Themes email newsletter. Select the widget. Add in the title here if you wish to. I'm going to skip adding the title. And we will select our newsletter from the drop down option. We will select subscribe to the newsletter. This is the newsletter that we created earlier at the very beginning. So let's select this one. And here the newsletter widget is now displaying on our sidebar. Let's enable the GDPR as well. And it has been enabled. We will also upload our newsletter icon. Click on upload. Select the newsletter icon. Click on select. And here the newsletter icon will display. Click on done. For our last and final widget. Click on add a widget and we will add in. The Blossom Themes feed for Instagram widget. This will display your latest Instagram photos on your sidebar. Select the widget and the Instagram widget has now been added to our site. If you wish to, you can make various changes from the option here. They are self-explanatory and very easy to explore. But if you face any difficulties, make sure you leave your comments down in the comment section below or you can directly reach out to our support team with the help of the link I have added in the description box below. Click on Done. Now click on Publish. Let's go to our site and we will give it a refresh. As you can see, all of the sidebar widgets that we added to our sidebar are now displaying on our site. Let's go back to our customizer. Now we will configure our footer areas. The process of configuring footer areas are very very similar to adding sidebar widgets to our sidebar. I will show you how to configure the footer area number 1 and you can follow the same process to configure your footer areas 2, 3 and 4. Let's scroll all the way down to the bottom right where footer is supposed to display and we will go into footer area number 1. So click on add a widget like we did earlier. Select from the list of available widgets that are here. Okay, let's add in the contact widget. You can also search for the widget from the search bar. Just type in contact. And here the contact widget has appeared. Click on it. Let's fill in the details. We will add in title, description, telephone, email and address. All of the details that you add will be displayed in your footer area number one over here. If you wish to feature the social media icons, click on add social icons. 
then search for the social media icon of your choice. If you want to add in Facebook, simply search for Facebook from the search bar, then select the Facebook icon after it has appeared. Inside of the link box, you have to copy and paste the link to your official social media page. Following the same process, you can keep on adding more social media icons. After you are done adding all of the social media links, you can click on apply and they will be displayed over here. After you are done, click on done and click on publish. Let's go to our site, scroll all the way down to the bottom and give it a refresh. You can see the footer area number one has now been added to our site. Let's go back. So this is the whole process. I'm going to remove the footer area because I don't want footer area on my site. But if you wish to add in the footer areas to your site, this is the process. And you can easily follow the same process for footer areas 2, 3 and 4. If you face any difficulties, if you have any questions or concerns, please make sure that you leave your questions down in the comment section below or you can directly reach out to our support team using the link I have added in the description box below. Click on publish to save the changes. Let's go back. We have already gone into the home page settings and the next is the footer settings. So with the help of the footer copyright text option, you will be able to edit the footer copyright text of your choice. But one thing that you have to note is that you cannot make the WordPress author and WordPress information disappear from here. That option is only available in our pro theme. With this option, you will be able to change this footer copyright text. So instead of the current footer copyright text, if you want to add in or remove any of the information, you just have to remove the information that you want to remove and add in the information of your choice. And the text that you add here will be displayed over here. Click on publish. If you go back and give your site a refresh, you will see the footer copyright text has now been changed. Let's go to the top and back to our customizer. The last option is the additional CSS. If you want to add in your own CSS code to customize the appearance and layout of your site, you can just easily add in the CSS code over here, then click on publish to save the changes. Again, if you face any difficulty in doing this, make sure you reach out to our support team. Let's go back and we are finally done with all of the customizer settings of Seva Lite free WordPress theme. We will head back to our homepage and we will also go back to our site and give it a final refresh. Now we will take a final look at our site and see how it has turned out with all of those customization and configurations that we made. So that was it about Seva Light Free WordPress theme. If you liked this video, please do give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Your support means a lot to us. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments section below. I have said it time and again throughout the video, or you can directly reach out to our support team with the link I have added in the description box below. It is absolutely free for anyone who uses the free or the pro themes so you can make sure to make the best use of our service that we have for you. Please follow us on all of our social media platforms. I have added the links in the description box below and you will also find the link on the banner of our channel homepage. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next video.